this is the eighth lecture in module four here we will discuss another method of speed control of induction motor that is slip power recovery scheme first of all let's see what is meant by slip power slip power is nothing but the amount of power or the part of uh, air gap power which is not converted to mechanical energy that is uh, in the case of an induction motor the air gap power a part of the air gap power is converted to mechanical energy and the remaining power will be uh, dissipated in the rotor resistance itself and that is otherwise known as rotor electrical power or slip power in the previous lecture we discussed the rotor resistance control in which the slip power was wasted in the external rotor resistance so by controlling the amount of power which was wasted in the external re resistance we were controlling the speed of the induction motor instead of wasting that power wasting the slip power in the external resistance here we are going to use the slip power that is we are going to feed the uh, slip power back to the source let's see how it's done so first this are the introduction um, part the slip power control methods regulate the amount of slip power how much slip power should be uh, fed back to the source that is controlled by regulating the slip power the mechanical power developed can be altered and hence for a given torque speed can be varied that means the uh, air gap power is equal to mechanical power plus slip power so if we are controlling or varying the amount of uh, slip power that means we are varying the amount of mechanical power so by varying the mechanical power you can control the speed since pm is equal to t into omega m for a particular or for a given amount of torque if we are controlling pm then speed can be controlled uh, let's see how it's done in detail so uh, first of all we will uh, consider the perfect equivalent circuit of an induction motor in which the rotor circuit is injected with an external voltage source vr the rotor circuit is connected with an external voltage source vr and e is the uh, stator induced vmf and se is the rotor induced vmf because s is the uh, slip slip of the induction motor here p in is the power input to the state stator input power to the motor and uh, this p from the input power p in there will be some losses in the stator circuit and the remaining power after the losses the remaining power that is the air gap power will be transferred from stator to rotor through the air gap so after losses from p in we will get pg which is transferred to stator so uh, sorry transferred to rotor so rotor will be receiving the power air gap power pg so the uh, air gap power pg will not be completely converted to mechanical power a, a part of the air gap power will be converted to mechanical power and it will be delivered to the load mechanical load and the remaining part of pg will be uh, remaining part of pg is known as uh, the slip power and is represented by pr so this is the equation that represents this uh, or uh, the relation between these powers that is pm is equal to pg minus pr so pr is the power absorbed by the voltage source vr so here 
since we are connecting a voltage source we are here this slip power is absorbed by the voltage source vr and pm is delivered to load so the magnitude and sign of pr can be controlled by controlling the magnitude and phase of vr by controlling the magnitude and phase of vr we can control the magnitude and sign of pr so this is the equation we have already discussed when uh, let's see what happens when pr is controlled that means P pr is a slip power we have to keep in mind that the pr is the slip power in the in the rotor circuit so when p we have already stated that by controlling the value of pr we can control the speed of the induction motor then what happens if pr is controlled let's see if pr is equal to 0 if pr is equal to 0 that means pm is equal to pg that means the motor runs on its natural speed torque characteristic or it will be running at synchronous speed it is an ideal case then when pr is greater than 0 when pr is greater than 0 that means pr increases if pr is increased from 0 then the value of pm will reduce if pm decreases obviously speed will decrease it will reduce pm and therefore motor will run at lower speed for the same torque that means if pr is zero speed will be at natural speed or high speed uh, or equal to synchronous speed and if pr increases from zero the speed will decrease speed decreases from the natural speed and again another case when pr is equal to g pr equals g both these powers are equal then that means there is there won't be any mechanical power developed pm is equal to zero if pm is equal to zero speed will be zero so by controlling the value of pr from zero to pg we can control the speed of the motor from natural speed that is omega ms to zero okay this is known as subsynchronous speed operation that means the operation of the motor is below synchronous speed zero speed to synchronous speed operation there is no operation above synchronous speed this is known as subsynchronous speed operation next if pr is less than zero that is another case that we have we haven't discussed yet if pr is less than zero means pr is negative if pr is negative slip power is negative then we are act as a source of power and pm will be larger than pg pm is equal to pg minus pr if pr is negative then pm will be larger than pg and motor will run at a speed higher than synchronous speed PM, if pm increases omega m will increase so speed will be higher than synchronous speed this is known as super synchronous speed operation these two can be implemented using slip power curve scheme first of all we will discuss the subsynchronous speed operation and it is realized with the help of static Kramer drive. These are the different configurations of slip power recovery schemes. The first one is static Kramer drive and second one is static Sherbius drive. The first one that is static Kramer drive gives operation in subsynchronous or uh, speed below synchronous speed. Thank you.